Okay. So, Daniel talked about. <laughs> Daniel talked about relating this article to the teaching gap and uh, teachers needing to plan ahead of time to anticipate student responses and how we would respond to all the different ways of solving the problem. How did I do? Did I summarize that pretty good? <laughs> Other reactions to the article, or other comments or thoughts you had about the article? Yeah, Chris. I thought it was um, interesting that um, some of the teachers on there weren't used to change, and to have something like this high-level um, task, and trying to implement that in their curriculum, and then seeing that some kids being um, creatures of habit, and then not having to implement that, and then trying to get them to now pay attention and study from this whole new um, mess of play and everything. I thought that was um, something interesting that for us teachers that we have to take in so much and then still yet have to implement all these different plans and everything and then try to somehow still engage the kids who are used to a certain method of teaching. So um, everybody's got to change, right? Eventually, yes. <laughs> So it's, it's easy to fall back into procedural, mechanical things, even if your intent is to have it be conceptual. Other comments, reactions? Tyler? Um, I like how they said the first time they have teachers look at this, the teachers are usually like overwhelmed. Like, how am I supposed to write all this down, all the different ways to solve every different problem and plan for every little thing? And it really addressed that in the very like next sentence, where it was like, the point is not to write everything down right then. It's to change your way of thinking so that you start anticipating the different things that students can do and you start understanding all the mathematics behind that. Mm -hmm. Cool. I think it's a very like beneficial way for um, first year teachers to look at things because then they're just like building this really strong lesson plan throughout the years. If they just start from the very beginning working on it all the way through, I think it's a good technique for them to. Did the rest of you find it useful? Something you could you'd say is valuable? Okay, good lots of nods. Other comments? comments? Any other? Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between teaching conceptually? and teaching your students. What might I what might I be meaning by asking that question? Or what what, what comes to mind? I think it's more focused on the students rather than like the teachers. What's that? It's more focused on the students' discussions rather than like your teacher influence. Which, which is? Teaching conceptually is more of facilitating the asking guided questions where teaching your students is just like you're up there telling them what to do. Okay. Interesting. Other other comments? Um, I think teaching conceptually, you're getting up there, you're explaining all the concepts behind it, you're explaining, mm -hmm. okay, this is how we do this, this is the reason why this goes like that, this is what all of this means. Whereas when you start talking about teaching your students, you start thinking about, okay, now how is my student understanding this? What are they thinking about? How can I better say this information so that they can better grasp what's going on? Nice. Other thoughts? The one or the other? Mutually exclusive? I think they go hand in hand to be able to, because okay. to be able to teach conceptually, you need to 
know what your students know and then be able to anticipate possibly where their understanding is incorrect or where they may have shortcomings in their prior teaching. So you have to be able to anticipate how they're going to react to your content. Yeah, so we, we have to listen to where what, what, what these guys are saying. We have to listen to what our students are thinking about and how they're they're grasping it and the things that the understanding their understandings they're coming with <clears throat> in order to help them take the best path towards improving their understanding and their thinking, right? To to uh, aligning it um, with right understanding or a conceptual understanding. So, um, so you can teach conceptually, just someone said, by just standing and just talking or showing a lot of ideas. But uh, then you mentioned The Teaching Gap. A big, um, if you haven't read this book, The Teaching Gap, it's a fast, small read. It, it's probably, uh, of anything I've read, it had the most influence on my teaching of any book. So, um, have you all already had 42? And so, I, I always have the students read it in 42, MTE 42, but I don't know if all the teachers do that. So, supposed you're supposed to read it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, supposed to. Okay, so, you, okay, at least in some, some readers. Okay. So, um, and in that book, it talks about that uh, you can teach um, conceptually, but. Um, it could be the, the, the teacher stating ideas versus students developing ideas and concepts. And that's what we want, because it's that discovery, it's that uh, the aha that really produces lasting, deep learning, rather than just listening passively to a teacher you know, saying all these ideas wonderfully, right? So um, that goes with this idea. So good conceptual teaching is letting the students develop the concepts, and not just the teacher stating them, but then as a teacher, you're listening all along the way, and you're, you're understanding the student's thinking, so that you can steer them in the right way. You can't get to point B unless you know where you're starting from, right? Where, where your point A is. Okay. Um, or not as easily, anyway. Uh, last chance comments about the article. So, which article did you like better, the first one or the second one? Second one. And why? <laughs> that's, that's real nice. <laughs> the concepts. The second one was more familiar with 42? Yeah. Yeah, that's why I was more more interesting. <clears throat> okay, so let's talk about. Um, I have your the packet. I have not looked at your actual files yet, but I, I did grade the packet. Your grade is at the bottom of the end, and you see comments. <laughs> Same, yeah, all semester. And so, because this grading scheme doesn't equate to it doesn't equate to uh, you know ninety eight seventy eight scale. Um, I will be giving you maybe probably two updates of your current grade in the class throughout the semester. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll do my compilation of all this stuff and give you kind of a current standing a couple times because you'll, you'll um, want to know that, especially with the, the way that I'm doing this. Okay, so uh, the first comment was, uh, so page three. 
lots of you were, you had an N involved on this page. There's nothing to do with N on this page. Okay, it's, it's, it's uh, number nine is all about the temperature is 25, and we're looking at a change of 10 from 25, and the resulting change in um, attendance. So lots of you are writing N's throughout this whole page, and there's, there's nothing about N here. This is for number nine. Number nine, page three. Yeah. And I did that at first too, but I actually went back to the race here. Mm -hmm. And it kind of set that off as question number eight starts talking about n. Right. So when you move on to nine, you're thinking you're working with n. It mm -hmm. kind of threw me off. Yeah. And then when I got to the last page, I was like, oh, here's where it's talking about n. Mm -hmm. It got me really confused. So luckily I figured it out, but number eight kind of sets off the tone of the well, that in the instructions part where suppose it's 25 degrees and then highlight the point using the slider. Um, to me, it's at first thought then, because it mentioned the sliders, so I was like, okay, well, we're using that, so we've got to put it in there. And number eight says the change in the value of n observed the graph, so then automatically just assumes that since you're talking about it, you take on the value of n. Okay, fair point, but still, it's, it's a, this is all about 25 degrees. It's all about 25 degrees. Okay, um, just a general comment. It, it felt to me like many of you, it felt rushed. And so what happens when you rush is uh, you go quickly, obviously, and, you, and so there's a lack of thorough thinking through it, okay? And so there's kind of there's kind of an issue of integrity, like do you really are you really confident 100 percent that what you're writing is correct, or are you just trying to get it done and you, and you know maybe it's wrong? So I, I don't know I can't read your mind, um, but the the thing about this is especially when you get to the end on the last page, is when you're you're entering these command lines you know what the animation should be like, and so some of you have, you. You put command lines. Uh, you're writing things like a of, uh, a of x and a of y, and and this just won't produce the right animation. And so then I'm scratching my head, like, okay, if that doesn't work, then why is this left as the final answer? So um, I guess I'm just trying to motivate you to really be honest when you when you're writing something out. Be honest about is this correct or not? Can, can you do have that that skill that um, where you're confident? It's kind of like a it's kind of like the idea of proof, right? It's kind of like the proof in mathematics. So uh, are you do you have a way of checking by looking at how the different things are fitting together and looking at the looking at your resulting thing on graphic calculator to really say okay I got it or I'm not sure, and if I'm not sure, then I'm going to email Mark or get some help from the classmate or something like that. Okay. Um, last page. Lots of you in 11, 12, you just talked about domain restriction, or it's outside of the domain restriction. Well, you're not really getting at. This is the critical kind of part of this last page is the making the animation work and look um, correct. And so, um, never really talked about some kind of domain restriction, or it's outside of the domain, and so therefore it doesn't show up. But you're not really getting mathematically to what's going on. Really not getting to what's going on mathematically. So uh, maybe we'll just quickly. Are there any <laughs> questions about that? So that? That was a that was a common thing. Yeah. Well, it says one of my equations doesn't work, but. On my paper or on the graph, it does work. It works. Yeah. I'll have to try it out. Okay. I'll have to. i to see. So if you want to leave that with me afterwards, <laughs> I'll I'll look at that. Okay. So um, what do we want here? What is the function here? Oh, this was the other thing too. So a lot of people were doing a point, comma, another point, which we never introduced. It doesn't actually give a segment. I mean, it, it kind of. What it gives is a vector, okay? So what this is showing is a vector, and that we never introduced that. So the idea of graphing a segment was to, to graph it just like we've graphed everything else, okay? To treat a segment as, 
as a graphing a function or, or making a graph and then restricting it to just get the part we want. That was the idea. So um, this was something that maybe you stumbled on and it ended up doing the right thing, but we never introduced that as a vector and we never introduced that. That wasn't the intention. The intention was um, to um, plot a graph with a restriction to create those segments. So let's just do that real quick. So uh, So we got a function. Let's see. Okay. Okay, perfect. All right, that's good. So a different function, but serves the purpose. So if I want, um, let's so the point. So I want the movable point. So maybe let's don't look at what you wrote. So let's just think through it again. Don't don't search through it to see what you wrote. But if I want to plot a movable point. Um, that's just the points of this function. So first of all, if I want a point, how do I do a point? Control 2. And now I want it, this point to be um, movable according on, on, our sli on my slider. So my x value will be n. And to keep it on the... I, I did f. I did f. So does this get us a blue point? Okay, cool. So now we want to create this triangle. And so let's make our, what should we make our delta x? So we don't want to do 10 in this case, based on the graph that I have here. We don't want, we don't want to do 10. So what do we want to make? Our change in x from our point. 0.5. I love it. 0.5. Okay, so we'll do 0.5. And so how do we graph that a horizontal line segment starting from that point that is 0.5 long? Everyone, don't look at what you wrote in your packet. See if you can write that command line. So I want to write a command line that's going to give me a horizontal line. From that point, it extends to the right 0.5 from that point. And then as I change n, it will stay with it. So can you write out that command line? Is the task clear? Now, I thought you were start. So, Alice, you got it? Maybe? Maybe? All right, give it a shot. Okay, I said that, I don't know, I kind of guessed the starting point is 0.5. Okay. So, I said that n plus 0.5 is greater than or equal to 1 half, which is greater is less than or equal to 4.5, which just gives it a limit, which I know it doesn't necessarily mean that that's what it is. Okay, so the, those are. The, that's your restricting? And then n plus 0.5. Okay. So that should, I don't know, I could be wrong. Like I said, I, I think it is what it is. But so what, in general, what are we trying to do here? We're trying to... Get, get a line that's only 0.5 long. Right, but so that's, the only 0.5 long is, is that's the, that's the second thing we're going to do. So first we got to just get this, right, what are we going to do? So we need a horizontal line through this point. So what is a horizontal line through this point? No seconds. Here we go. Well, what if the guy with the foot had y equals x? Y equals x? No, plus 0.5. x plus 
N plus 0.5? Yeah. <clears throat> no. Go ahead. Yeah. Is that right? No. Okay. <coughs> Slide asked. Molly, what do you think? Y equals what? So we need it to be the y value at the point, right? If we, that's what we want the horizontal to be, the y value of that point, which is? So now, so that, so we got to get that as a graph first. That's that horizontal line. And now we can talk about the restriction. And how do we do the restriction? So maybe, Alex, you want to do the restriction? This is where we do the restriction. Well, what is it? So we want, do we want to restrict x or do we want to restrict y? X. So we need a starting value of x, the lower bound, and the upper bound for x. So where is x starting at? N. Up until? How do we do? OK, now, without looking at what you wrote, now we want the corresponding change in y for the function, right? Mm -hmm. So that, that's going to that's gonna change. We change n, that amount of change of y. For that change in x is going to be a change in value. So can you write the next command line for that little segment without looking at what you wrote before? So think through it again. What will that command line that will give us the corresponding change in y? So there's a there. And then correctly change as you do it. Everyone do this. This is the easy stuff. We all gotta be able to do this. It's gonna get a lot harder. So the one thing we don't want to do as little as possible is trial and error with graphing calculator in terms of it might be this, let me try that. It might be this, let me try that. Okay? So we want to get good at. Can, can we write it down and know that it's going to be right the first time instead of just. I mean, there, a little bit of that is okay. A little bit of that is okay. But good mathematical thinking can, you know, you, can, you should be able to write it and know that it's going to work. All right, so. Tyler. X equals. Uh, N plus um, 0.5. Okay, so I'm going to stop you right there. So explain that. Why x equals n plus 0.5? Oh, because the end of your line segment ends at n plus 0.05. So okay. you're going to want your vertical one to, to go through that. So he's proposing this. What do we think? So the rest of you, did you come up with that? Yes. Hopefully you did. And so let's just see if it's right so far. Does it stay in the right place? Yes. Cool. Okay. And? Now we want to make sure. So now are we restricting Y or X? Y. Okay, so Sarah, how are we going to restrict Y to make this work? Um, I did N plus 0.5 plus Y plus N plus N plus N plus F of n? Inside or outside? Inside. Uh, did I get it how you wanted it? Yes. That's what you thought? Let's see. So let's think about, so maybe we have the, this final balance. Let's think about this starting value of the starting value of y. What starting value of y is that for a segment? N plus 0.5. N plus 0.5. Okay. Yeah. 
plus 0.5. Starting value of y. Restricting y to start at what y value? After that, right? After that. And then what about, so do we want to stay with f of n plus 5? Yes. Let's see. Okay. So then the last, very last question on the sheet was, what's going on over here? So why does it work here and it doesn't work there? Tori, what, what's going on that we get to see that change in y over here, but then it disappears over here? Uh, y is no longer greater than f of n because your original graph is decreasing, so you can change your uh, y original, do you, are you talking about over here? Okay. But when you get past like the, the vertex at the top, that statement's no longer true, so it doesn't have the graph anymore. So you need to fix it. You need to change uh, those less than signs and the greater than signs. Okay, so um, yeah, you got it. I want to I uh, kind of hone in on that. What you said was this statement is no longer true. So let's, let's analyze this statement when the graph is decreasing. So it's, it's not really a matter of the statement being true or not. It's actually doing exactly what we're telling it to do. It's it's doing. Well, how is it? How is this doing exactly what we're telling it to do in this statement? Because what is this saying? Come on. It's basically saying do that part of uh, the graph until it's no longer uh, applicable, I guess. Because um, when it gets up to the top, the, it's no longer less than so. <coughs> what does this statement say? What is this saying? Lee? So it says draw all points where x equals z between uh, f of n and uh, f of n plus 1.5. Okay. So when it's still in all of those numbers of this boundary, or on this side, there are no numbers. Okay, so there are no numbers. So tell me, so explain more about that last thing you said. So x is just a set of all points that were shown on the graph. Okay. And currently where it is, or n value, there are no points between f of n, sorry, there are no points that are less than f of n plus 0.05. Okay, so f of n plus 0.05 is, where is that? That's down, uh, it's probably about there. Okay. And we want our y to be what? We want it to be less than that number. Less than that number. And greater Down here. And? And greater than. And greater than f of n. So we want all y values. Here's what's going on. We want all y values greater than f of n and also less than f of n plus 5, which are what values? None. So grand calculator has no problem with this. It's not, it, there's no error. There's no, what does it say? So is this where you guys... Undefined in the domain shown, okay? But the, the key is the reason, the reason why, okay? There's, there are no points defined that are both above that and below that because those are, those are mutually exclusive sets. So it doesn't give us anything. So how do we fix it? So Chris, how do we fix it? You're trying to what? Melissa? Change it to greater than? Change it to greater than? Yeah. So say more. What do, you, what do you mean? So 
Am I going to change the X? Yes. So you're changing the X so that the Y is um, basically like flipping those domains, the F of N and the F of N plus X. Okay, you're going to so flip the... the same. So N plus 0.5 and then comma <coughs> F of N is greater than Y is greater than F of N plus 0.5. And explain to me now what that's doing. What is, what's going on there? That's just make, just like Harvey said, that it's there's no more points to find. That'll to find that will make it so that there are. How how does it make it that way? So what is that statement saying that gives us the points that we want? What is that statement saying that gives us the points that we want? I don't know. I don't know. That okay. it's changing it, but. Um, Carla. Um, it's saying that it wants you to. Like identify the points that are less than f of n, but right. greater than f of n plus 5, so then you'll have points where y is greater than f of n plus 5, but less than n. Because f of n is? Greater than f of n plus 5. It, f of n's at the top, and f of n plus 5 is down here. So now we're talking about all the y values above f of n plus 5 and also below, so we get the second one, right? Yeah, to like 0.5. Cool. So here we're already seeing, and all semester long, we're going to see this, this, how useful this function notation is, right? Because we can, it, it doesn't have to mean calculate a number, right? It, can, it stands for something that we, a value that we need, and we can just use that in command lines, and it stands for whatever that value is, without us ever calculating the output, you see? Or, so is, what does the expression 3 times g of 5 represent? So first of all, g of 5 is? Class of an ultima? Five years after 1990, which would be the cost of ultima in 1995. So 3 of that will be? The cost. The only one that could be right there is the cost of three ultimals, ultimas in 1995. A. Good. A. B. So we want the change in the cost of a Camry over a two-year period, starting a year since 1985. So the cost of the cost of the Camry. The change in cost of the Camry over a two-year period, it's starting A years since 1985. Which one does that? C. C. Yeah. It's the one that does that. Final minus initial, right? So it's going to be the change in the output when the input changes from A to A plus 2. Yeah. That's the way to think about it. It's the change in the output when the input changes from A to A plus 2. That's the two-year period starting at A. Number two is C. Number three. Answer B. Answer B. Define D final, find D initial, subtract. Three. Answer B. Number four. Which one of these? So we want a point. We want a point that immediately eliminates what? B and D. So we know we want a point. We know this is our point. It's got to be either A or C or maybe E. All right? So what does A do? What does that give them? What does that do? Is that up and down the y-axis. What about C? Follows on whatever we've defined F as. E. What would it be? What would the command line be to get maneuverable on the x-axis? N0. It's like A, but N0. It would be like this with N0. So E. Answer E. Number four. Answer is E. Are we good for the first four? Okay, so five and six, very interesting questions. You gotta know your stuff. You gotta know what graphing calculator does. So in this first one, g of x equals s squared. In essence, what have we just done? I defined it g of x equals s squared. What's that? So what is the function g? Just 
put this on in their lead. And so horizontal line and just whatever S is defined to be squared. Okay, and what is that? So what is S defined to be? One. Uh, well, here it's defined as one, but any constant really. But right now, what is S? We talked about this, right? Parameters by default are one. Parameters by default are one. So in this rule over here, it does, this is not the input that we've specified, the input symbol. So it's making that, it's just going to do one squared. So our function g is basically the constant function one. So now when I change the input, What is it graphing? It's g of n. So no matter what input you put into g, what is the value of g? So you're going to get what? Horizontal line that never changes. Because we basically have defined g as the constant function 1, no matter what you put for the input. So no matter how you change n, the input, it is a, I think. Is it? Yeah. A. Number five is A. All right, number six. So how is number six different? Uh, you're asking your input instead of X. So now we are defining the function this way. Now what's going to happen? So let's just talk about the function. So what what function have we defined here? What function have we defined here? Which is g. Just look at the first line. This is this quadratic function, right? Because it now now we got the right match of it's going to take that input and it's going to square it to get the output. That's a, that's this quadratic function, our our y equals x squared quadratic function. So now what we're going to do is when n takes on a particular value, say n is two, that's going to mean g of two. What's g of 2? So what is it going to graph? Horizontal line at y equals 4. If I change n to 10, that's going to mean? G of 10. Which is? 100. So when n is 10, what are we going to get? Horizontal line at 100. Come on. So every value of n makes g a different constant now. So you're getting different horizontal lines. What's that? B. B. 6 is B. A little bit tricky, but it really forces you to understand the way graphing calculator What's going on. Okay, number 7. We want delta m. Is that the horizontal line or the vertical line? <coughs> That's the horizontal line. So we want y equals y equals 200. Oh, y equals need y equals t of five. In fact, t of five is not 200. Yeah. It's like 196 or something like that. So you need y equals t of five, starting at starting at five, ending at ten. Which one is it? C. C. 7 is C. You need the function at 5 as the height, and then you want to start at x equals 5, and then x equals 10. Okay, uh, delta t is the obviously the vertical segment. We want x or y equals something. x equals what? This is x equals 10. We know it ends at x equals 10. So x equals 10 from what to what? Starting at t of 10, the lower bound, upper bound t of 5, b. a is b. Okay, so um, 
flip it over next to your name. Tell me what you got out of eight. Tell me what you got out of eight. So this will be a little, a little, it's not a big grade, it's a little grade, but more, it's actually, this was more for you to see how you're doing, okay? If you got two or three of these right, then you need to change your approach to the course, okay? If you got six, seven, or eight, I think you're, you're in great shape. If you're in the middle, then you just decide how you're going to adjust, okay? But uh, so this was just all stuff that we've been working on, just for you to see, monitor where, how you're doing. Okay, check this out. Okay, I'll collect those as you're looking at this very pretty uh, region. So when you're looking at a graph, curve or a line, what are you looking at? No, no, forget that. So when you have a graph, a curve or a line, what are you looking at when you're looking at a curve or a line? What in essence is this? Okay, so that, this question is apart from like, what I'm showing you. When you're looking at a curve or a line, any any graph, what are you looking at? Points. Points. Points, right? So it's a collection of points, right? It's a collection of points. When you're looking at a region like this, what are you looking at? Points. Okay, it's the same thing. This graph is points, but it's just a two-dimensional region of points rather than a curve or a line. So in one command line, can you reproduce this image in one command line? Work on it. Go. This is getting you ready for homework, which is challenging. We have challenging homework related to this. So let's figure this easy one out. One command line that's going to graph these points. One command line that's going to graph all of these points. I'll zoom out, okay? You zoom out, this is what happens. All right, I'll zoom back in. One command line that will graph these points. Go, put your hands together. Can you do it? So obviously you come to the realization this is based on a couple lines, right? Did you get the equations on those lines? What's this one? Okay. And this one is? So hopefully we all can do that. So now how are we going to get all these points? Okay. So it's kind of like our segments, right? Building our segments. So we've got it in terms of Y's. So that's the easiest way then is to look at all points, right, in between this way. So what's the, looking at all Y values, we want all points whose Y values are greater than 2X minus 1 and also less than this one. So that looks like this. So 2x minus 1 is our lower bound, is less than all values of y, so less than negative, or 1 half x plus 1. Okay, so this, this next activity is harder, okay, harder. So let me show you what it is for, the, for Tuesday. Okay, you're going to reproduce this one. 
Four command lines only. One command line for each element of the picture. Okay? So you've got the sun, the kite, the string, and the hills. One command line for each. One command line for each. And then? One command line for the hearts. One command line for the hearts. So this is a challenging problem. If you make progress and others need help, really help them. Don't tell them what you did. Okay? Really help. So think of a way to ask a question or give a hint, but not just give them your command lines, okay? So this is going to take some thinking, and so it's going to take more than one sitting. You're not just going to sit down and probably, maybe, maybe some might, but you probably just won't sit down and figure this out in an hour. You're going to have to work on it, put it down, come back to it several times. But that's, that's this problem solving. Do this one first. It's a little bit easier, okay? This one first. And so some of these elements are a lot are easier than others. So start with the easy ones and work your way into it. Okay? But you're gonna need to work at it in many sittings and think about it many times. But you'll what you'll find is that you will we'll make progress that way. Okay. And then I will post the third article for next Thursday. So you got this for Tuesday, and you got the third article for next Thursday. Okay? I, I haven't posted it yet. I'll post it home soon. Okay, cool. Have a great weekend.